If you've ever needed to do dust busting in your footage, you've probably just gone to the DaVinci Resolve GPU plugin and dropped it on your footage and it probably hasn't done a very good job. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can use Fusion in Resolve to dust bust, but it will be a manual process. But if you care about the quality of your image, this is a tutorial not to miss. So let's get into it. Okie dokie. So this step, dust busting or pixel fixing, is something that you should only do when you've got a locked edit. This isn't something that you really want to be doing if the edit is open and still being worked on because you could end up doing a massive amount of work and then take the shot out and just completely waste your time. So my recommendation here for what you're about to learn is the first piece of advice I can give you is do it at the end of the project. That means that you have pre-graded your footage, you have finished your edit, you've finished your sound mix or your sound mix might be off with someone else. Um, you've done all your image transforms. Everything when it comes to in terms of the picture is locked except for the cleanup. Okay, this is the last step that you want to be doing before going out and mastering your project. So the tools that you're going to need for this or the tools that will make this job easier are a good mouse with a scroll wheel and a pen tablet and you'll definitely need your keyboard because it's a combination of your keyboard, your pen tablet and your scroll wheel on your mouse or your mouse. That's the way I like to do it. It just makes it really, really fast switching between pen, mouse and, and keyboard. So on my timeline here, you will see that I've got three pieces of, of media. One, the red one is uh, the dust bust for film. So this is actually super 16 mil film and it has a few problems with it and I'm going to show you how to clean those up very quickly. And then I have part of my animation that I made for the Canon R5 launch, which has dust that needs to be removed for product cleanup, which is a big industry if you want to make some money. And there is also this last shot, which is it's a moving animation, so it's a CR2 file, and this is a raw CR2 file as well, both of the Canon R5 as the camera. But I used a 5D to shoot these two shots because I had to use a different camera because I was using the R5 in the shot. And you can see, because it's an older camera, that there is some, there's some pixel, there's some dead pixels, and there is also some dust and you know, just general stuff that gets into shots, especially when you up the resolution. And this is one of my big complaints about people wanting to shoot bigger resolution cameras. <laughs> the more resolution you have, the more cleanup work you have. So this step is going to become even more important as we go. Now, the next step in here, now that we know that everything that we want to do in our edit timeline, all of our visual stuff is done apart from the cleanup, is obviously convert these clips to fusion clips. So to do that, all you need to do is right click on the media, go up and create new fusion clip. So I'm just going to do that for all three of these clips, new fusion clip, because then I can just quickly jump around and do what I want. And to now access those clips in fusion, you have to select the clip that you want to look at and then go down to the fusion tab down here. Now remember again, this is I've already gone ahead and color graded. So when I'm doing my retouching, I'm sourcing the color and final look of the image. I'm not retouching and then going to color grade. I'm, color, I'm retouching after color grade. So that's, a, I know I've said it like a number of times, but it's super important. Okay, so let's just jump into Fusion. Now, if you're new in Fusion, what uh, you'll see here, this is my output blanking for the media. Okay, so that will just be clean because that's an output blank that I have on a 235 piece of, a 240 piece of media. Now, the, what you need to see up here is, if you're new to Fusion, is all of your tools. Now, down on this bottom line here, you basically have everything that you need if you don't want to be doing shift space and typing in stuff to find nodes to add into your fusion node tree so for me what i normally do i normally just do it the long way i like to type it out because that will actually bring up the tool or 
the node that I want to add. So I'm just going to click add oh, and it's just made a monkey of me and it hasn't added it. Thanks Fusion. So the other way that I can add it is by clicking here and it will add the node. Okay. So I don't know why Fusion does that, but sometimes it does and it's a bit of a pain in the bum. But if you, if you do it like me and it doesn't add it, then make sure you just select it on your media. That's what medium one is. That is your media and media out is uh, the result. So that's what you're going to be rendering. So whatever this looks like is what you're going to be rendering. Now, another way to look at this or understand this is on here, you have three dots. Now, these three dots are uh, in relation to the monitor, the monitoring inside of Fusion. Now, what this is, is source, uh, the source object, what you're doing to the media and the output of the media. That's the simplest way to think about it. So if I go up here and click the dual viewer, the dual viewer is now showing me that in the media out, I am actually seeing viewer two. Okay, so if I take that off, that is now showing me, so this window here is actually showing me the work that I'll be working on. And this window here would be showing me uh, what the source is. Okay, so if I go to medium, click one, there's my source material. And if I go to paint and click it there, that's where I'll be painting. See how my, I've now got my paint object that's come up, my little circle on my thing. And for me, because I'm using a professional monitor, which is external, which many of you might have, I am always selecting this one here, but that doesn't make any difference. You can always just select this one. And for me, I'm actually going to have to select this one so you guys can see the work that I'm doing. Now, I also prefer when I'm in this mode because I'm just doing cleanup uh, and I'm not going to be using my external monitor, what I would then do is I would just go to a single window up here. But that's my preference. You guys can kind of do whatever you want. If you want to have multiple windows open looking at, you know, your source, your uh, what you're working on and, and your output monitor, if you've got a deck link like what I do, then yes, you can do that. Okay, so we can see here that the media has been imported. We've now got our paint node in. We've selected our paint node and you can see this is the frame count of the shot here. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do 265 frames for you to watch. That would just be ridiculous. But on your keyboard, if you just mouse, uh, if you right tab on the arrow key and you use the left arrow key, then you'll see that uh, the footage is actually moving through. So that's just a simple way to scrub. If you want to play it in real time, depending on how powerful your computer is, I'm just using a little laptop you should just be able to push the space bar and you should get somewhere close to real-time playback. Now, what you'll find is, is this green bar here is showing you how much of the shot it's actually rendered as it plays through. And the more you play it through on the loop, the quicker it will play back in real time. Now, playing it back in real time is a good method just to see exactly where you've got problems. So... As he goes to move, I can see there's a problem down there, there's a problem there, and there's a bunch of little flashes around there. Okay, so I just need to make a decision of where I want to, there's one right there, right there. So I definitely wanna get rid of that on film. And the reason why I've decided to show you dust busting for film and not just concentrating on video is because dust busting on film is drastically different than video. And the, and the reason why is because, you've, one, you've got a grain structure. Two, you'll have physical debris in between the light source and the recording medium, which is the film. So you get a result of C, everything is moving. Every pixel's moving. Every individual kind of reaction to the light is organic. It's, so there is no two frames that are ever the same. And then what happens is, is you end up getting these things like this. So it's not just a pixel, they'll be random shapes. Whereas with digital, normally what you're painting out is like a hot pixel. It's just like a star or a dot or a floating kind of circle. They're, they're a lot easier to identify and, and, uh, and find. 
Okay, so now that we've identified that we have an area of interest that we want to get rid of, what we can do is zoom in on it. Now, how you zoom in and navigate the, the work face is up to you. But what I like to do, and this is what I was saying at the start, that a combination of a keyboard, a mouse and a pen tablet is a good thing, is if you hold down the, the command button on a Mac and you scroll wheel in, it will take you to the point where you put the mouse on the frame in Fusion. So if I go anywhere on the frame, it will take me directly there. And that's a really handy tool. If I hold the middle mouse button down, I can then drag the frame around to just to make it easier to work so that you can see it. Okay, so that's how you navigate through the window. So I'm currently on frame uh, four, which is shown down here. So frame four, there's frame five, there's frame four. Okay, I have my paint tool selected down here. I want to see the result of my paint, so I have it selected here on number two, and number three is just my output monitor, which you guys can't see. And then up here, I have my brush controls, which relate to the node that I have selected, which is highlighted in red down here. So if I go up to my brush controls, you can now see that I have um, these brush controls here, but... I haven't actually selected which type of brush I want. So the brushes that I have to choose from are up here. So I have multi-stroke, clone multi-stroke, stroke, and then like a polyline multi-stroke. So this is if you're going to draw a shape that's going to move. This is uh, if you're going to like write something on. Multi-stroke is if you're going... A clone multi-stroke is obviously what we want because we're going to use a clone tool to clone out stuff. The standard paint tool here is kind of a clone tool as well because you can use it to select stuff, but if you choose this one, it will stay on for every frame, whereas this one here will go on and off, so it's for one frame only, okay? Okay. So this is definitely the one we want because we're going to have to do frame by frame retouching because that's what this tutorial is about. And as you can see, as soon as I click it, I now have a star in the middle or across a target in the middle of my circle. So if I just push Alt and click the left mouse button, just like Photoshop, I'm saying, hey, this is where I want to source the clone stamp from. So I'm just going to click Alt again to select a source from there and then I'm just going to paint out, paint it out and there you go, it's gone. And now I just go on to the next frame and it's not there so I can zoom out and then just check the next frame to see if there's anything else to paint out. And then basically the process of this is just this for every frame all the way through to the end. So I'll give you another example of how to, something that you might want to paint out. So we'll just look for something big. So it's easy to see. Oh, there is one right there. Let's just go back. Look at that. Yay. So we'll just go paint this out. Now, the reason why I said that a good combination is pen tool, mouse and keyboard uh, is because you can move pretty quickly. So if I want to just resize the size of my, my clone tool, an easy way to do it is hold down the command button, hold down your pen tool on your, on your uh, Wacom tablet or whatever you're using or your mouse pad, and you can just move left and right, up or down, and it will just scale it in and out. Okay, it will scale it to the size that you want. Now, let's just select here. And because I've reduced the softness, I'm just going to have to do a little bit more painting to get rid of it. Now, I like to paint paint out my areas with a fairly soft brush um, because what I find is is that um, if you use too much of a hard brush you can end up with really definitive looking kind of lines uh, around the place which become really really noticeable uh, especially if you're doing it frame after frame after frame after frame like what you would if you have a hot pixel so there's another little dot right there so we'll just get rid of that one as well Okay, so that is dust busting for film. That is pretty much it. It is a frame by frame by frame kind of process. Now, I know that there is a 
different way of doing this inside the color page which I'll look at before I finish the tutorial but there's a reason why I do it this way and that's because if you have if you're tracking something like a piece of dust or something that's floating through the frame it's actually moving it's there frame by frame by frame you end up having to do it all frame by frame by frame anyway even if you're using the GPU accelerated uh, tool so you may as well just do it frame by frame because then you know it's done after the first pass so let's jump back into here and now go and look at a digital shot so that you can see the difference between dust and pixels. Now I can show you that because I know that right here in this area, because I dust busted this on my animation. Okay, so again, I'm just going to add a paint node. So I'm just gonna add a paint node. I'm just going to go back out of here because Fusion has got this little thing that happens and I'm going to show it to you now because I was on that clip and I was in here and it's actually when I've gone to add a paint node to this and this is a glitch in Resolve so you just have to be aware of this. I've gone to add the paint node. It hasn't added in here. You saw me do it. Now I'm going to go back in here and you'll see in this clip here it's actually dropped a second paint node. Now... I'm just going to delete that because I know that there's nothing on it. But just be aware that that does happen. So if you're in uh, Fusion, like I was here, and you're trying to add a paint node, it might be adding it to the previous node that you were working on. I don't know. Resolve, uh, the guys at Blackmagic have really got to fix that. It's a bit ridiculous. Now, I've found a workaround for it. You have to actually select this here. And now if I just click off that and do shift command uh, paint, it'll drop it in. And it hasn't dropped it into the node structure. But if I hold down shift and click drag and drop it, you'll see that it's, that it's now in. Okay. So we now have our paint node <laughs> after, after all that. Okay. So again, I'm just going to go up and I'm going to select my multi-clone tool and I'm now going to command click and zoom on my scroll wheel into this area here. And you can see here that um, you can see here that there is several different types of dust. Okay, and I'm going to point them out to you. And you might have to I might have to play through it a bit so that you can see it. Now, if you look carefully, this one is skipping around. That one's not skipping around. That one's pretty stationary. That one's moving. And that one's moving. And that's where the GPU accelerated uh, tool in the color page won't work because these ones are moving. So you're going to end up having to click on it every frame. Click, click, click. They don't track them. They just click one spot. It'll just clone that spot now, if there's an area of high contrast like here where you've got um, like the letter C and you've got a pixel right there and you're trying to use the GPU accelerated, it's just going to munt the shape of that word. It's just going to destroy it because it, it just it, it, the GPU accelerated one's just not great for this stuff. I still think this is a job that has to kind of be managed by hand. Okay, so this is definitely a hot pixel right there. And I know it is because I cleaned it up before. So if I zoom right in on it, let me just make my tool smaller. You can see it's got a bit of a starring effect. Okay, you can see it's like a star, like that right there. And that's what a hot pixel is. And you can see it's actually moving around a little bit and it's changing shape from like four pixels to one pixel to one pixel and then it's gone because something's actually changed. So if I now zoom out here, you'll see, and this is why using the predetermined um, or the pre, the GPU accelerated version of it's not good because wherever that was set in the previous frame, which is, see how much it's moved? So it would be up here, but the dead pixel's now down here because it's moved. In fact, it's over here. It's jumped over there. 
and you can get really caught out with that stuff in cleanup. So you just have to be aware of that. Okay. So if you're going to clean up hot pixels like this one, it is exactly the same process as, as what I showed you before. So I'm just going to hit option to select something. I'm going to increase the size of my... I'm just going to paint it out. Now, my one piece of advice to you would be try never to paint from a bright area to a dark area. For some reason, just through my experience, it ends up looking better if you always paint from the dark area into the dark into the light area you just end up with a better result so in here you can see there's just like dust everywhere which is uh, an annoyance and depending on how much your clients want it fixed and how clean and pristine they want their product to look now obviously if you're doing a product for like a beer manufacturer or you're doing a camera one or this is a hot pixel or you're doing uh, anything of that sort, then, you know, all product photography has to look perfect. So this basically is Photoshop pixel fixing or retouching in Resolve, right? And you just do this for everything in the frame that your client wants removed and your client is basically going to tell you to get rid of everything that is not the product. So this is a really important skill to understand. It's a really important skill to have in your back pocket. Because if you do, then, I mean, I'll show you this really quickly. I'll just take away a couple of these really quickly and you watch what difference it actually makes when I zoom out. It makes the product look so much cleaner and a lot more pristine just in that area. Look at that. It already looks 100 times better. But what, what you'll notice is, is the more you do, the more you find. And uh, it's kind of, you have to kind of really balance it between you know how far you go to what you do um, but you can see it's not it doesn't take long to, to do it it's just you need to have patience when doing it okay uh, all right so let's jump out of here now because I'm actually getting obsessed with it you know if you're a bit of a perfectionist then you're going to want to you'll spend days on shots Okay, so we're now going to jump out and we're going to go back to our timeline window and we're going to select this shot here. And I'm going to show you why I don't use the GPU accelerated, the GPU accelerated version of this. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find my uh, da -da -da, dead pixel fixer. I'm just going to add a new node by clicking command... Uh, option S and I'm going to go up and I'm going to get Dustbuster. So I'm going to drop the Dustbuster on and I now have uh, the control. So now I can now go over here and I so prefer the uh, intuitive nature of zooming in in uh, Fusion than this. It's just so much easier. I never thought I'd say that actually. I never thought that I would say that it's so much easier to Dustbust in, in Fusion. It's Okay, let's select that. See, look at what it's done. It's not even close. Like, it is terrible. So, let's undo, undo, undo. Let's get it back. Let's get a Command S. Let's just add another node. I'm going to oh, do a dead pixel fixer. So, there, dead pixel fix that. And it's done nothing. It, it just hasn't worked. It just hasn't removed it. So you can try and do this stuff with uh, like with this stuff, but I just find it more of an irritation than I know that I can just go into result into fusion and I can do it quickly on my own. So again, if I was just to jump back now into fusion, let's just go back into fusion and I'll show you how quick it is in fusion to get rid of that and how quickly, uh, you'll get a result. So I'm just going to make sure I've got that click because I don't want to have that same problem as I did before. I'm going to add a paint node. I'm going to go up here, click my multi-stroke tool. I'm going to click my brush controls. I'm going to soften this off and I'm going to drop the size. And I'm now going to zoom in on the target area that I want, which is there. I'm going to option click. 
what's going on? It's my Wacom. Oh, I've got my pen upside down because I've been twirling it. Oh, there you go. Idiot. And that's already better than the result that I got from... That's already better than the result that I got from the automatic version in uh, the colour page. It's already better. And while I'm here, I can just quickly go in and get that pixel that's there. I can sample from here. I'm actually going to go against my advice and sample the, the, the brighter side, but now I'm going to sample the darker side and I'm just going to blend them together. And uh, zoom out. Still needs a little bit of work. So let's just... There you go. If I zoom out, you probably won't even notice it. There you go. So there's just two of the worst ones on that shot. Now, because this shot's moving as well, it's just going to come back, right? So you're going to have to go through and do it frame by frame, okay? But that's the, that's the lay of the land. That's how you dust bust in DaVinci Resolve 16. Well, guys, hopefully... I didn't bore you too much working on my animation files and hopefully I didn't scare you away from dust busting because realistically, if you want to get pristine images, pristine, you have to go that far on every shot. Now, it's not something I do on every project, but it's something that you should consider. If you do really want to know something specific in regards to image cleanup, uh, drop a comment down below and let me know. Okay, guys. Uh, I guess that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.